I uh, apologize for the uh, interruption before. If you've ever spent any significant time in South Florida, uh, you probably know what that was all about. Anyway, um, okay, continuing, looking at number 15 in chapter 6, uh, why do cumulus clouds often have flat tops? This I mentioned, I believe, earlier in a chapter 5 discussion, but I decided I'd include a great photograph of a cumulonimbus cloud. And you can see here the vertical development. Now, when we talk about vertical development, the base of this cloud might be about 2,000 feet above the ground. The top of the cloud, where the anvil is, that might be 55, 60, 65,000 feet above the ground. That is the top of the troposphere. That is the tropopause. That is the boundary between the troposphere and the stratosphere. The spreading out occurs because you have a, a, a physical boundary there. And there are high level winds just in the stratosphere that will then take these clouds and shear them right off. And that's really what's happening here. So from a distance, you have the opportunity to really see a beautiful perspective of this. And if you've ever been out in the Midwest, you really see beautiful images of these. And the people in the Midwest know that what's going on at the ground under one of those could be some very severe weather, including tornadoes, hail, straight line winds, uh, winds that will exceed hurricane force if only over a very, very narrow area. Um, so that's, that's probably a good uh, overview of 15, 16, uh, 19, rain shadow. Now, uh, there's a pretty good tutorial, and you can see it at this address. You can go here yourself, and they actually have it narrated and have a video of it. I've got the stop action uh, slides for it. But here's the basic idea. If this is the Pacific Ocean, and the, the, the poster child example of this would be the western United States, whether it's the Cascades uh, and the Sierra Mountains, the Cascades of Oregon and Washington, or the Sierra Mountains of California. Uh, those are the major mountain ranges that are just a little bit inland away from the coast. And as the air comes in off the Pacific, what we see happening here is it carries water vapor with it, of course. Now, maybe not all that much because it is cold water, but as you force that air to rise up here along the western, the windward side of the mountain, well, you're going to force the air to cool. It's going to reach its condensation point or its dew point, and you're going to get clouds, and you do get copious amounts of rain and snow in the Sierra Mountain, as an example. Now, on the other side of the Sierra Mountain, if you look at a map of the United States, you'll see the other side is a desert. The leeward side is Reno, Nevada, Las Vegas, Nevada. So those areas are bone dry. Well, what happens when the air gets over the peak of the mountains, um, it begins to descend. As it descends, uh, one thing I'll disagree with question six is the dew point. I don't see any reason why the dew point would go up, but the relative humidity will come down. Why? Because as the air descends, it warms. And in fact, it warms what we call adiabatically, which means on this side, if it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit, after rising and sinking, it might be 90 on the other side. So not only is it drier because the moisture, if you will, has been wrung out of it, like right wringing out a sponge on the western side, but on this side, because it descended as dry air, it tends to warm faster, which means an equivalent altitude on the east side might be 20 degrees warmer than an equivalent altitude on the west side. And this is the time of year where you can begin to see that. So if you go to a map of, uh, in fact, let me do that. Let me just uh, call it up um, on Google. We'll go to WW2010, which is the uh, atmosphere site that I happen to like that has some good stuff. I think I'd recommended this to you before. And if I go to current weather, and if I go to surface weather, and if I pick a region, let's go to the southwest. Now you're looking at a uh, station report map here, but we can extract the information fairly easily. I see here the temperature to the, uh, it's to the upper left of any circle. 67 degrees, and this is probably Santa Barbara, 69 in San Francisco. And if I go to the east of the mountains, I've got an 87 degrees here. Um, I've got 75 over here. It looks like 75 in Vegas. Um, not exactly the greatest temperature contrast in the world, but there's some. I mean, 62 in, in uh, Los Angeles and 75 over in Vegas. So 13 degrees warmer, 
when you get up and over and you've got that adiabatic warming. So with that, that should do it for Chapter 6, and then uh, you'll see me with Chapter 7 soon enough. Take care.